Hi everybody. Hey Esther and thank you Abraham. We look a lot alike. I have two questions. The first question is I have been very successful getting what I want before I found out about Abraham. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I have been practicing Abraham or the art of allowing for quite some time never with enough I'd say punch or everything that I accomplish and things that come to my life are somewhat diluted just so so it's not really it's almost like there's a cap or ceiling and I can't break through it and I'll give you an example we want to hear your example but we want to just show you something because since it's still in the process of becoming why are you putting a cap or ceiling on it why don't you just let it keep playing itself out till it's really where you want it and also while it is unfolding you're still living life and adding to it so it's like you weren't asking for all of it when you first started and as it comes along you keep thinking of more that you want to add to it so you continue to ask as you're moving along we're happy to hear your example the best way to describe it would be things happen as i go and i can see i'm in a vortex and i try to do for example rampage of appreciation or meditating Now but somehow we'll hear you somehow i can't get to the point for example i'll just go back quickly to when i didn't know about abraham and i had an idea or a product or a service got a hold of me and i focused on it with such determination that everything else fell in a place beautifully and i can get to that place where i can attract an idea or a product and i know when it shows up i'll run with it this will be the only thing i needed for everything else to fall back in a place well there are a few things that we want us to say to you and you will hear them easily so we like the terminology that you used about when it shows up then i want to run with it and we want you to think about that i will run with it and we want you to think about source energy running with it before you even receive the impulse to run with it consider this how something unfolds in terms of its physicality is much more about the energy that you let flow before you started your action than about anything that you're doing with your action. So, since you used those really good words, you want to run with it. We think that's a good hook for you to realize that your inner being has been running with it since you asked for the first piece of it and the second piece of it. In other words, this vortex that we're describing and all of this attraction of all the cooperative components there's already a lot that's been running with it before you get involved and so if your stance can be if your intention if your focus can be all right they're already running with it and i want to jump on and run with them but i want to jump in in a way that i don't slow it down with my negative beliefs or expectations Does that make sense to you? Okay. Because your inner being knows what you want and knows how it's going to come about and it is a sure thing. It's not maybe, it's not if, it is a sure thing. Because maybe you haven't experienced it, maybe you don't have the experience, therefore you don't have the expectation. If you get involved in it too directly, too fast, then you are the one introducing resistance into the equation where if you could just back off a little bit and let it run that's why you gave us these exact words when you said this other deal i got focused on it and left everything else alone and off it went that's the same thing that we're saying to you so the question that we're hearing you ask is a big question is okay so i'm the creator of my own experience abraham so on the one hand you tell me to think about what i want and on the other hand you tell me don't try too hard don't think too much about it well the reason that we say all of those things to you is because often when you're thinking hard about something is because you're trying to overcome obstacles 
You're trying to make it happen. That's kind of motivation rather than inspiration. And motivation gets right in the way of inspiration. It's sort of what we were talking about earlier. When you're trying really hard to motivate yourself because you're focused upon what isn't happening, then your attention to what isn't happening keeps you out of the receiving mode so you can't receive good ideas. So you have to find that balance of knowing when to step on the gas yourself with your thoughts and when to just lay back and let the universe take it as far as the universe can take it while you sort of hang back to catch up with the impulse. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Words like trying too hard we want to interject here. It's one of the reasons that we stopped calling this the science of deliberate creation. People were working too hard against themselves. And we began calling it the art of allowing. The art of allowing what you said you want to develop and to be inspired to be received by you. Your inner being is projecting or extending ideas to you all the time. The revelation is always flowing. But you got to get in the receiving mode, which means you got to listen, not talk. Can you feel the difference? So what we're really talking about is the difference between Receiving a thought and thinking a thought. If you can discover that difference of receiving an impulse rather than figuring it out, this will really help you. Some years ago, Esther was overwhelmed with the details of her day. And she was sitting in a restaurant with a paper, like a butcher paper, over the tablecloth. And she's asking us, I don't know how to get out from under this. I've got too much to do and I'm not having a good time. So we encouraged her to get something to write with and to write on this butcher paper. So we encouraged her to just make a big T and to write at the top of the left-hand column things I've got to do today because she had some urgency and to write over the other column things I would like the universe to do for me today. My list, your list. Now, she had a notebook that 10 people could not have accomplished in that day. So we encouraged her to look through it and just write down the things that she absolutely, with no question, was going to do today. Just pick from it. So she picked a scanty few things. She put about 10 things on her list from the more than 100 that were on the list. And then we encouraged her to write everything that was left on the universe's side of the placemat. All the other things, everything that you're not going to do today, just delegate it to the universe. Well, Esther thought that was silly because so far the universe had seemed pretty lazy to her. <laughs> She'd been carrying that to-do list around quite a long time. But she did it. She wrote... It took quite a while to handwrite her typewritten page. Esther is a computer programmer, and she has programmed her to-do list. It's categorized, it's prioritized, and it's big. So she wrote it all on the list, and then she moved into her day. Now, she's newly focused, and she felt with each thing that she wrote over there, she felt slightly lighter. Like a little freedom was coming her way. Couldn't really understand it at that time, but she was feeling better and better. And then she left the restaurant with the intention of getting these ten things done, which she nearly did. Got about seven of them. And to her surprise and delight, the universe outdid her. Someone she'd been needing to contact for a long time called her. Something else that she'd been worried about, she received information that it got taken care of, it was resolved. By releasing it to the universe, because when you ask, it is given, but you've got to let it happen. And so often, there's a part of you, humans, we love you so much, that you're trying to prove your worthiness through your efforts or through your actions or something. 
You're trying to prove your worthiness through your sacrifice, through your suffering. It's sort of something that you've been taught from others. If you're not suffering, then you must not be worthy of the abundance that you're receiving. And the thing that's difficult with those like you and those like Esther is that if that really is your mindset and the more you are receiving, then the more you must dig in and justify what you are receiving until you get a pretty heavy load that you're dragging along behind you and life stops being fun. You just have to let the universe help you the way it is designed to help you. You said, I'll go. I'll figure out what I want. I'll tell you. You line it up. I'll receive it, and I'll take action when it's appropriate. How nice is that? But if you take action, even the action of making a list and making plans and making phone calls, if you take action before you're in alignment or before it's ripe and ready to pluck, then you just overwhelm yourself and bog yourself down. And most important, you hinder yourself from receiving the life-giving really good ideas that the universe is yielding to you all day, every day. You heard that clearly, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. I have one more question. So before you do, we just want to emphasize that, so what we're talking about is, how do I, we're talking about you, how do I in my human form, how do I know when to dig in and try harder, and when do I know when to just release it to the universe? And we say, Always release it to the universe. <laughs> Always release it to the universe. And if you do enough of that, you'll start getting tuned in and you'll start feeling impulses to do things. And when you feel the impulse, do it. Now, this is an important distinction. You all have been doing a measure of that your whole life. And sometimes you get an impulse to do something but you talk yourself out of it because you don't think that that impulse is the most important thing on the list because your mother told you that when you were little. You wanted to do this. She wanted you to do that. So you've been trained by your parents, by your teachers, by the people that you live with. You've been trained by other selfish people around you that what matters to you isn't the most important thing, that you should get your work done and then play. And that's the equivalent of saying you should get yourself all jacked up and all full of resistance and then you should expect blessings from the universe. <laughs> that's what that's saying. No. So you want to give yourself permission to let these universal forces, this is energy that creates worlds. This is conscious that knows where you stand in relationship to everything you want and knows what your best attention is right now. And really... Once you've launched something, your best intention for a long while is to get out of the way and let the cooperative components gather. And when they're gathered and when you're in sync with that non-physical consciousness, you'll receive an impulse and it will be a big one.